What do you feel comes first, the millionaire mindset or the millionaire bank account? As Jeremy mentioned in class one, there are absolutely methods and approaches required to trade successfully. And real life trading does an amazing job delivering that information. A few years ago, I was exactly where you are right now on the other side of the computer, daring to dream about all I could accomplish with massive successful trading. I went through all the RLT education, I did coaching with Jeremy, we spent tons of time together and I even went to check out other courses and other companies. Only to truly find my calling in assisting glorious individuals to find their purpose through trading the markets. Thank you for helping us with our mission to enrich lives. Live from Buck Island, British Virgin Islands, this is your motivational, sensational, inspirational, educational, aspirational, international, keenly awaited, highly anticipated edition of Master Yourself, Master the Markets, Real Life Trading Psychology, class number three. Folks and friends, team and family, fans and followers from around the entire world, how is everyone doing on this terrific night or day? Depends on where you are in the world and where you might be watching this, but as one of my good friends once said, the sun is always shining somewhere in the world. Carolyn says, what an exciting class is tonight. It's going to be great. You're going to love it. Enjoy, enjoy. Marshall says, Ice Cube. <laughs> Here's the cool news. I did get about, um, I would say approximately 300 participants for the Ice Cube Challenge um, across both Instagram, Facebook, and Slack. So it was really good. Carolyn says, I failed the Ice Cube Challenge. Hey, it is okay. Don't sweat it. We had another trader who, uh, who failed it today as well, um, just simply because that particular trader posted two ice cubes at the two different times. Darian says, dude, I'm at my 50th birthday dinner, so my responses will be limited, but I'm here. <laughs> Talk about dedication. My boy Darian turns 50 once in his life, and he's like, oh, not your birthday, someone else's. Okay. I was going to really give you some serious props, dude. <laughs> I was like, this guy. <laughs> knows his priorities. I like it. I like it. Well, anyway, much love, much hugs for everyone who is here today. And in this presentation will be hopefully quite fantastic for many of you here. I got some good news though. I want to share a message that I got from a particular trader. Um, and I blocked out names just to keep everything copacetic, but I want to read what he said. I thought it was really great. He said, hey, so just want to let you know that something changed in me last night after participating in your class. First of all, how cool is that? Just something changed in me last night after participating in your class. That's how change happens, ladies and gentlemen. Literally spending time around people, generating thoughts and ideas and perspectives that you might not have had before. The smallest moments, the, the micro magical moments that can change your life are everywhere around us. We just have to take the time to do it. So it said it didn't happen immediately, but it hit me while I was sleeping. I made the jump and made me jump out of bed and start writing for hours, which is amazing. Writing for hours. That's quite impressive. So I don't know if I'll read it word for word, but after the, yeah, sure I will. After the class, my wife and I got into a little disagreement about the possible careers she had been offered recently. I didn't totally support and agree with some of the choices she was making regarding our family's future and her line of work, but there was something she said that also hit me last night when I asked her what she wants in life, what her goals are and what she enjoys in her current job. She said that she loves helping the youth get into the skilled trades and a career path. That is something I feel passionate about as well. We are both licensed tradespeople before becoming employed by the government to regulate the skilled trades in Ontario. Um, I was an electrician and I was a sprinkler and protection installer. So that's when it threw me out of bed in the excitement. That's what we're meant to do. Help educate, promote the skilled trade trades here in Ontario. The government does a really poor job here of doing it and no one really is doing a good job of this. The system is so hard to navigate and the information is scattered everywhere. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to create an opportunity where this and create um, I'm going to create an opportunity to create value for hundreds of thousands of people. I have in my notes last night 
easy five pages of ideas on how we can better and more effectively do what's being done now. How epic is that? Talk about a why that gets created. Someone that goes, oh man, this is what I want to do. This is why I want to do it. This is where it's fantastic. It's so beautiful. It's so inspiring. Also, my Americans step up to the game. <laughs> I should have called this master yourself, master the markets in Canada, master the Canadian markets. That's what I should have called this class. <laughs> All the Canadians are having massive breakthroughs, but that is amazing. It's a really, really powerful thing. And I'm extremely excited this particular person um, just had such a great revelation, a good push through, and just a good mission that's exciting because what's gonna happen is that particular person will start going down thoughts and trails and ideas and mind maps and mind valleys that that trader might not have ever visited before. And they're gonna create thoughts and perspectives. And again, as you create new thoughts, you create new beliefs. And as you create new beliefs, what begins to happen? Your life will change, right? Your life will change. That's how you change your life. You begin to think new thoughts and new thoughts will begin to shape your belief systems. So this is where we are. And tonight we'll get very deep. What is really holding you back? And I, I ask myself this question as well. I think that there's always ways that we can continue to progress and help more people and become more effective and more empowering and more impactful. But as I mentioned in the very first class and module, if you don't have it now, it's because there is some fear that you have. There is something holding you back. There is some fear. So that's where we are tonight. And this is most likely what keeps many of us from obtaining whatever the success is that's in our mind that we want to obtain. It's the fear of the unknown. Because if we go back hundreds of years or thousands of years, if you were a human that lived and you ate a berry that was unknown, that you were unfamiliar with, you could easily die. If you went somewhere that you had never been before, you could easily die, get killed in battle, get killed and get murdered, whatever. Like you don't, you don't know. Things are so precarious. Maybe some mountain lion eats your face off. Like who the heck knows? Guns weren't around that long. Defenses weren't around that long. It's like, how do you protect yourself against nature? I still get absolutely blown away that there were legitimate <laughs> people living in Africa, Canada, Alaska, Australia, New Zealand for thousands and thousands of years. So much incredible climate change in so many different various places, extremely hot, extremely cold, extremely wet, extremely, it's just amazing. So all of those aspects get built into, we don't know what we don't know. And we fear it subconsciously. We are unfamiliar with where we are going because we haven't been there. And since we haven't been there, it is truly what holds us back. We talked about in just the last class that very often we know the exact date and time that we were at our lowest level. We know how much money was required to be at our lowest level. We know what rock bottom feels like. Many of us know what absolute depression looks like and feels like. We know what poverty looks like and feels like. We might know what just struggling looks like. Or if you don't know that, let's say you grew up in a very blessed household, phenomenal, but you at that point in time still might only know what you know. You know what comfort feels like. You know what having a bed to sleep on at night and not having to sleep under towels, right? You might know what it feels like to have running water anytime you want or electricity anytime you want. So you'll still know what you know, but you still are unfamiliar with where you could go, how you could go and what you could truly become. And it's that fear which holds so many people back. 
because you haven't tasted it. You haven't experienced it. Just here's an example. Type in a three into the chat pane if you have never in your entire life flown first class. Now, for those of you who are looking at the chat pane, you'll notice there's a lot of threes coming in, right? It's a lot of threes. So let's just talk about, what, I mean, why not? It's a very simple thing, right? Mike says only once it was a free upgrade. Hey, that's, that's fair. <laughs> okay, Allison says, because it costs money. Okay. Igna says, I'm too cheap. All right. Laura says, I want to sit by the wing. That's fair. Might, might be like a, a fear thing, a comfort thing. Like I want to be, I want to be in a nice, safe spot. But I mean, if you sit by the wing and the whole plane crashes, it doesn't really matter where you sit, right? <laughs> okay, cost is number one and I'm too cheap. That's what most people are saying. Okay, um, how much is a first class ticket from one part of the country to another part of the country? I'm like, what? Someone says 5K. Oh, not quite, guys. <laughs> not quite. About $2,000, maybe. Edward says it's about six or 7,000 from LA to Taiwan. Yeah, that's across the, that's across the whole globe. Yep. So if you're just, let's say you want to fly from Nashville, Tennessee to Las Vegas first class, it's going to cost you somewhere around fourteen, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300. Depends on where you're going. But okay, $2,000. All right. So for everyone saying I'm too cheap, have you ever spent more than $2,000 on something? Of course you have. I mean, everyone does. So it's not that you're too cheap. You just don't value it. Because being too cheap means you'll never spend anything more than that particular thing. <laughs> You just, you, I mean, if you're just like, I'm too cheap, that means you've never bought anything more than that thing is. Sammy says, yeah, I don't value it. Right. So it's just, the, it's just a value that that's the thing. I mean, you probably, you, you guys might've spent $2,000 on a trade before. Right. Now, again, I'm not saying that you can't or that you shouldn't or that you won't, or that you, you should never fly first class. But here's the question. If you've never done it, how long will it be that you never do it? Think about that for a moment. If you've never done something, how long will it be that you'll never do it? Will there ever be a time that you'll try it? Right? Will there ever be a time that you go, I want to do it. This is how I want to do it. This is where I want to do it. Allison says, if money was no object, I would do it. it. Takes a long time to get for money to become no object to do it. And what's beautiful about that, Allison, is that's a very, very common, very, very common thing is when I say fly first class, I don't mean fly first class every single time. Well, if you just do it once, just to experience it, just to see. Maybe you hate it. Maybe it's like, it's not worth it. Maybe you don't like it. I'm not saying I fly first class every time I travel. I don't, I really don't. It depends on the flight, it depends on how long I'm flying. It depends on the, it does depend on the price, like if it's reasonable. So when I went to Australia, um, I could have upgraded my seat to first class. I think it cost like 12 extra grand. I was like, mm, nah, <laughs> nah it doesn't, doesn't really make sense. Yeah, it was 12, it was 12 extra grand. It was, it was really, really wild. But I was, I was in a nice seat. It was only a good seat, but I was like, nah, I'm okay. But on the way back, on the way back, <laughs> they messed up something and blah, blah, blah. And they're like, hey, well, we'll feel free to give you an upgrade for free. And I was asking them, I was like, well, hey, can I just take a, can I take a, a first class upgrade for the same, same price that you're going to upgrade me now? And they're like, well, yeah, sure. And so the upgrade only costs like an additional $1,000. And I was like, that's a wrap. That's it. In the bag. I'm in this. That's worth it. Now... The reason I'm bringing all of this up is because that's a, such an easy thing to do. It's so simple. It, it really, really doesn't cost that much in, in the grand scheme of things. But what it helps you do is it helps you find out and helps you determine a whole new paradigm shift. It helps you think new things. It helps you contemplate new things. It helps you determine new things because the seats are more comfortable. The seats are bigger. If you have any alcohol, which you probably won't in the last year and some change, you know, since, since COVID, 
but the you know you get the food and you get food you get drink you get really really good service the seats are much more comfortable and if you're really tall then it can make a difference but the fact of the matter is you don't know what you don't know and my whole challenge to you is try to find small things that you've never done before and figure out why you haven't done it and then go do it it doesn't have to be every single time you fly right it really doesn't it doesn't have to be every time you do anything it is just simply a thing that you get to attack and go let me try this let me experience it to see if i like it because again many human beings will say when I have tons of money, then I'll do it. But the challenge with that is when you're here now, you're the youngest and most healthy that you'll ever be. Maybe not the most healthy, but you're definitely going to be the youngest that you're ever going to be now. So how much longer is it going to be until you have all the money in the world to do whatever you want to do? How many years or months will that be that you prolong pleasure? That's the question that you really have to ask. How much longer are you going to prolong pleasure because you're too cheap? Meaning you. So when someone says that, think, think about what that means. You, when you go, I, I am too cheap. That means you're an inexpensive person. <laughs> if you were for sale, you would not cost a lot. Think about that. I and mean, that's what you're saying though. If you feel that way, you're like, I, I'm too cheap. You could say I'm extremely financially conscious and I don't feel like buying a first class plane ticket all the time, but when the opportunity rises, I will. So I'm just saying, instead of saying I'm too cheap, I mean, it's just, why? Why say that at all? Are you? Are you a cheap person? You know, like you're not worth that much money. You're not valuable. It's just something to consider. It's always something to think about. Because again, what you have to keep in mind is one of two things are gonna happen. In life, you're gonna make more money as time progresses. It's very natural, it's very normal. You're gonna make more money as time progresses. And yes, I'm not saying that you have to or that you should buy really expensive watches, really expensive cars, really expensive houses, buy so many things that are extremely high on the list, live paycheck to paycheck, pinch, 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 pinch. I'm not saying that you have to live a life to impress anyone. All I'm getting at is what are some things that you have not done that you want to do and then go do them. <laughs> That's really what it is. Because all the people that typed into three, I personally, every time I fly first class, I feel great. I think it's really great. I think it's extremely cool. Doug says, I like that. There are so many ways we devalue ourselves with a negative self-talk. Absolutely. It's extremely true because it's just, in essence, everything you say becomes real. We talked about that last class when you're saying, I'm too greedy. If you say I'm greedy all the time, you're going to become greedy. Now, what if you're terrified of flights? You don't want to fly. You don't like being in planes and you, you're absolutely, you're horrifically scared to fly. Okay, fair point. So, Everyone, go ahead and type into your car, type into the chat pane, what's your dream car? Okay, so we're gonna have, someone says I own it. Perfect, what, what, do, you, what do you own? Mark says I'm driving it now, awesome, what is it? So if you guys have it now, tell me. So I'm getting a lot of really cool car, a lot of really good answers. We got the Tesla trucks, we got the uh, Tesla Model X, 67 GT Shelby. That's cool. Right. 1984 Ford Bronco. I got Eve says an Audi. we got some Teslas. we got the Ferrari. Got a lot of nice cars in this list. Got a, a Mercedes. Got a 1956 Porsche. 
a, a new truck, a Lincoln, a lot of different cars in here. 56 Porsche Roadster. So the question is, if you have named that car, that vehicle, have you ever driven one? Now, some of you said you're already driving it, right? Some of you said you're already in it, but there's definitely a lot of people that are saying no. All right, they're saying no, we're not yet. But again, totally fine. Not a negative thing. But I'll tell you a story of a coaching student that I was working with. He lives in Hawaii. And I asked him, I was like, hey, man, you know, at one point, I was like, what's in your, um, what's your dream car? He's like, oh, I know exactly what my dream car is. Brand new, out the box, off, hot off the factory Corvette. Red, red on red on red, all red Corvette. He's like, I love that car. I was like, cool, man. He's like, do you want to buy it brand new? He goes, yep, I want to be the, I want to be the first owner. I want it to be my car. He goes, I don't care about the depreciation. It doesn't bother me. I know it depreciates. I just want that car. I think it's a, I think it's a gorgeous vehicle. I was like, it is a gorgeous vehicle, man. That's cool. So when's the last time you drove one? He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, when's the last time you drove a Corvette? You guys know what he said? He said what a lot of you guys said in the chat pane. I've never driven one. Really? I mean, he was almost in his 60s at this time. Like, you've never driven a Corvette? He's like, no, I've always wanted to buy one. I want to buy it brand new. Okay. So he was saving up some money to buy it when he had enough money. When he had, a, when, when he had enough money, he was going to give himself pleasure by buying a brand new Corvette. So I simply asked him the question, what are some ways that you can experience this now for less money? So what are some ways, right? You can rent one, absolutely. Right? You can, you can rent one for sure. You can do a test drive, absolutely. Someone said you can steal one. <laughs> that is technically true. You can lease one, right? You can do a racing course. That is absolutely correct. Nitro says get a girlfriend who has one. That's, that's a possibility. So AKA you could borrow one. <laughs> Right, you can borrow one, sure. <laughs> but I mean, think about all the different ways that we're outlining that you could experience something that's beautiful in your life, something that brings you joy and pleasure without having to spend all the money to buy one. Okay, how about this one? I got another one. Type in a six into the chat pane if you have never eaten at a three-star Michelin restaurant. All right. So we got a lot of sixes on this one. Allison says, I don't know, but maybe I have. Jeremiah says, I'm not even sure what that is. John says, I don't know what that is. T says, I've never done it. I'm not sure. You would know, I think. You would know. Yeah, I think you would know, guys. <laughs> I think you would know. It's not, trust me, it's not expensive. It, it, that, that's not the way to know. <laughs> There's a lot of expensive non non-Michelin steakhouses and non-Michelin restaurants. So it's just, just the, the, the bill does not dictate if it's a Michelin star restaurant. But again, the reason I'm bringing this up is a lot of this is just simply the fear of the unknown that we're not experiencing things because we go, you know what? I've never experienced it and I will experience it one day when I have enough money, then I will give myself some pleasure. Then I will give my ple myself pleasure because I don't have enough money now. And if I don't have enough money now to enjoy myself and enjoy my life, if I don't have enough money now to enjoy myself, enjoy my life, I will have money later and then I will reward myself. Okay, that's fair, that's fair. I'm not gonna say that's a negative, I'm not gonna say that's a bad thing, but how long, <laughs> how long will you deny yourself pleasure? Come up with a time, set some goals, right? Create some dreams, think of some things, be creative, do some things that you might not have ever done because one of my favorite quotes, both the pawn and the king get put in the same box at the end of the game. 
meaning you're going to die for sure. Now, at the end of after what you die, you can come up with that based on your religion or your beliefs, and that's totally fine. Everyone has the ability to do that. But regardless, it's all going to happen for sure. <laughs> I had someone in the chat painting saying, dude, I'm Catholic. I was taught to deny pleasure. Yeah, man. I lived a long, long life denying myself pleasure. Long life. A lot of time. A lot of guilt. A lot of pleasures. All the pleasures, I would say, nope, can't do that because, you know, the witness religion believes the end of the world is imminent. Armageddon's coming. Everyone's going to die. There's no need to do anything now. Just keep waiting. So the thing is, the unknown, our brains are terrified of it. They really, really are because we haven't experienced it yet. If we haven't experienced it yet, we're scared of it naturally. So if you have tons of money, boundless money, money is no object. Do you think that you will still be comfortable doing things that you've never done before? And the answer is no. <laughs> no, you will not. You won't because you haven't built that muscle. That's like saying, okay, when I get really, really, really rich, I'm going to go run a marathon. What? <laughs> what are you doing? You're going you're to run a marathon when you get rich? Yeah, because I'll have tons of time available. I'll have tons of money. I'll take off work and I'll just go run a marathon. Hmm. All right, bro. Good luck. So again, the piece of the the piece of the puzzle is it, we all say, we always say when, but the point is we can experience small things now. We can experience the things that we want now in fragments to determine if you actually like it or not. Here's another story. I had another session with a coaching student. Um, this particular gentleman was saving up some money to take his family on a cruise, and. The cruise was in Italy. It was a Mediterranean cruise. Uh, I think it was a Disney, a Disney Mediterranean cruise from Italy all around the Mediterranean. It was like nine nights kind of thing, something like that. And I think it was, you know, all, all in the whole trip, tax tag and title, 60K for flights, for food hotel there and back and, and then you know the the cruise and all that like it was it was a big deal this guy was saving up a long time to take his family on a cruise for sixty thousand dollars right it was a nice really nice cruise so again it wasn't the cruise that cost six it was everything everything because he had he, oh by the way sorry i forgot to mention this he has a family of seven <laughs> all right family of seven so him, his wife, five kids. There you go. So you guys are like, why the heck is it 60 grand? Seven people are going. Forgot to throw that in there. My bad. Is it still, is it, is it now more expensive or what? Yeah. Doug says first class. Yeah, they, he wasn't going to get like the bottom barrel room. He was going to get like a nice room. It was around 60,000 guys. If, if it was 50 or 40, it was, it was a lot of money. It was five figures. Okay. Five figures, he wanted to do it big. Now, I asked him, I was like, dude, that's so cool. Because again, first of all, just think through this. If you guys were like, wow, that's a lot of that's a lot of money. That is an that is an insane amount of money. Okay, again, that's that's one perspective to have. If your mind immediately went to the money, if your mind immediately went to the money, you have a scarcity issue scarcity you you have a scarcity issue when it comes to money if your mind immediately went to the memory and the joy and the experience that his family is going to have then you have an abundance mindset i'm just letting you all know that okay because when i look at sixty thousand dollars i have trained myself to go okay cool well what is it what's the experience what's happening 
who's getting what and how are they getting it and do they love it and are they going to enjoy it for the rest of their lives, right? What's it look like? Give me some details. I'm not going to say no. No amount of money phases me at this point. It was like, here's a $12 million yacht. All right, well, let's talk about it. Let me see if I can budget it. Let me see, maybe 10 years from now, I'll buy it. But between now and then, I'll get on that yacht. I'll ride around on it. I'll drop $100,000 for a week. I'll test it out. I'll see if I like it, so on and so forth. You guys get the point? Okay. So he wanted to go to Italy. He was going to drop some money. And I asked him the question, when's the last time that you and your family had gone on a cruise? And you guys know what he said? <laughs> never. We've never been on a cruise. We want to go on this one. Never been on a cruise ever. And I was like, bro, you're going to drop 60 grand and you've never been on a cruise before? Wow. That's insane. What if you don't like it? What if your kids get motion sickness? Right? What if you're, what if someone loses the passport? Blah, 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 blah. But he didn't want to do a test run. Why did he not want to do a test run? Why do people never want to do a test run? Why do people avoid the small pieces of the puzzle to get there? Why would he avoid spending, I don't know, four grand on a cruise for his family of seven? Because if he spends four, then that's going to be $4,000 less than 60. And that's a scarcity mindset. I will now have less money than I could. It will set me back from my goal because now I have less money than I could have had or should have had. That, my friends, is a scarcity mindset. That is a fear of the unknown. That is being afraid of, oh, what if I don't get it back? What if I spend that money and I never get that money back again? Oh no, what would happen? And this has happened to me so many times, ladies and gentlemen, so many times. So you, what will happen like during my life, I would save and save and I would just never do it. I would never get there. It would never happen. You just build and build and build and grow and grow and grow. And then you're 75 and you're like, oh man, I've only been on two cruises my entire life. Type in a seven. If you think it would be the coolest vacation ever with you, your family, and some friends to rent a catamaran and sail around Greece for a week. Okay. Now type in a 7.9. If you've never done that, never looked into it, never researched it, never found out how much it costs, never even, never even considered that it could be a possibility. Cause I'll tell you right now, that's like a $10,000 vacation. It's not bad. Ladies and gentlemen, we, we have to learn how to dream. Because again, if you're like, oh, wait a minute, $10,000. But if I spend that, then I won't have any more. <laughs> yeah. If I spend $10,000, that's $10,000 less than I have now. I can't do it. I need more money. I need more money in order to do that thing. But the problem is you already have the money. Check out this quote, Marcus Aurelius. It's not death a man should fear, but he should fear never beginning to live. Let that sink in. Start living. Because again, another, another true story. This particular person's here. I won't call out his name, but this particular trader person is here. Um, there's a trader who is investing in uh, the island I'm on right now. So the island I'm on right now, I opened it up to a lot of people and I was like, hey, who wants to do this investment with me? I'll give you guys a guaranteed return of a certain amount of money and you know who wants in. And so I had a particular one of my coaching students is like, yep, dude, of course I'm in this. Why would I not? That, does, that sounds like an absolute easy thing. And I was like, cool, man. Um, it's $100,000 minimum. And he was like, eh, you know, me, I don't, I don't, maybe, but but he did it okay he did it Hundred thousand in 
And he was a little scared. He was a little afraid. He was a little worried initially. And he was like, you know what? I think I can make that back. I think I can make it trading. I, I have a big enough account. He He's um, a liquid millionaire. So he's like, I think I can make this back. Literally within four days of putting in that 100,000, he made that back and then some on a trade. Because he got uncomfortable, took a big leap. It's pretty cool, right? Now, again, some of you might be going, oh, well, that's easy because he's a millionaire. <laughs> sure. Here, here's the cool part. In order to be a millionaire, you have to become a millionaire. <laughs> right? It, there's there's steps to it. Like, you, you don't just, oh, oh, I'm here now. There's a process. So this particular trader studied and studied and studied and researched and researched and researched and then bought a lot of Tesla at a low price and then reached out and did a coaching session with me. And I charged him an outrageous amount of money to work with me every single week for four months. And he didn't want to do it. He negotiated. I said, bro, I don't negotiate. This is just the price. But if you have X amount of dollars in your account, you'll probably make it back in, I don't know, three weeks, which he did. So since we started working together, his accounts are up approximately 500%. Because he learned a lot about options. He learned about a lot about researching good companies. He learned a lot about taking good trades. And he put a lot of money on Tesla and made a lot of money on Tesla. Because he studied and studied and studied and did a lot of research. And he had very, very specific goals. But in order to have those goals, he had to break through what? He had to break through fears. A lot of fears, a lot of fears. And he put in tons and tons and tons. I'm talking 10 hours a day into just meditation, thinking, researching, reaching out to other mentors, other people, other coaches, both spiritual, emotional, physical, relationship, marriage, everything. Just He just, he just started attacking it. So a lot of people are like, well, how do I overcome the scarcity mindset? Books. That's how I did it. I read a lot of books. And then every single time I read the book, whatever the book said do, I did those things. That's the small piece, the small difference between where you are now and where you want to be is doing the homework in the books. 75% of people don't finish a book that they start. Okay, of, of the 25% that do finish, only 10% of that 25% actually do the homework that the book gives you. Most good books give you homework. Now, Audible, great way to consume books for sure. But this is one of my favorite books, Jen Sincero, You Are a Badass. I will work with you one day, Jen. I say it every time because I'm coming for you, baby girl. I think you're awesome. Can't wait to work with you. Awaken the Giant Within by Tony Robbins. Everyone knows about Tony. Uh, do Cool Stuff <laughs> by Mickey really, really wonderful uh, woman that, that she has done so much greatness. I, I'm excited to work with her. And then The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari by Robin Sharma. So again, if you want to talk about like breaking the scarcity model, just read books that focus on scarcity. Read books that focus on happiness. Read books on how you can become a better version of yourself. Anil says, I know Mickey. I know, <laughs> I know you do, Anil. I know you do. Why would you not know Mickey? Of course you do. <laughs> oh, man. I cannot wait to hang out with you every second of the day next week, dude. I'm going to be on you like white on rice. Anyway, I think it's just really cool what she... Um, what she's done. I think, I think her, her elements are great, but in each one of these books, especially Jen's and Mickey, uh, what ended up happening is I'll just kind of run down a story that both of them faced, but at some point they had to put up like $30,000 to do something for Jen. It was to hire a coach, this really expensive coach who had done like a few best selling books or whatever, by the way, Anil Gupta is a bestseller. So, Jen Sincero, right? She had to pay $30,000 to work with a coach to help her sell a book. And then Mickey, I had to spend 30 grand on opening an organic pizza shop in New York City. 
So, you know, these random things, they are scary. They're like, I don't, I don't have the money right now. So I'll do it when I have the money. Sure you will. <laughs> of course, of course you will. Of course it's money that's holding you back. Right? I mean, of course it's money. It has to be money, right? You don't have the money. That's the only reason you haven't done it. If you had the money, you would definitely do it. You would, <laughs> you would definitely do it if you had the money. Because the funny part is, and be honest with me, this is the part where I want you guys to really open up for a second. Type in a one in the chat pane if you have the money right now. Okay. Um, Doug KK types in a one. Doug, I'm going to unmute you really quick. I'm going to unmute you, Doug. I'm, you're coming on the show, the webinar. So Doug is one of the first people to type in a one. Doug, what do you have the money for? You typed in a one. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, bro. You sound phenomenal. Right on. Yeah. Um, really, I have the money to do anything I want to do. Okay. So tell me something you want to do that you haven't done yet. Uh, go on one of those cruises. Nice. Which one? The Mediterranean one or like the sailboat one? Well, uh, you got me to thinking. I'm going to start with a smaller cruise to see if I even like it. Okay. So, you, so you've never been on an actual like like a carnival cruise or a Norwegian cruise, princess cruise, anything like that? No. Nope. And I've uh, talked to people that go on them all the time and love them. Just one of those things uh just haven't done yet. Yeah, and that's fair. So, so you definitely have the mind to do it, is what you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I'm not going to get commission for selling you a cruise. I want you to know that. <laughs> <laughs> but I should. <laughs> um, what cruise you think you would want to go on? Just like the first one that pops up? Or are you going to do a little bit of research? Or really well, expensive, really inexpensive, somewhere in the middle? Um, well, I live here in Washington State, and I uh, meet a lot of people that go on these Alaska cruises. Oh, dude, they're awesome. Yeah, my folks have been to Alaska. I've never been to Alaska. Okay. But I love the wilderness. I love the outdoors. All right, bro. Tell me how much Alaskan cruise costs, if you had to guess. You probably know the answer, but... Uh, I'm guessing about six... Uh, I have two kids, so uh, two adult kids. Sure. Uh, so six to eight K. Max. <laughs> okay. top tier dude okay. maybe maybe i mean you live in washington state so it's like it's like 1100 dollars a person honestly yeah i can throw a rock at it yeah it's, it's maybe 1100 dollars a person give or take and, and with covid it'll probably be 750 you could probably find, you might even find a deal for 500 bucks i think i traded a little ccl last week and i'm gonna help pay for it there you go man there you go <laughs> I love it. That's really, really cool, dude. That's really cool. But do you see how, like, in a way, it, it's exciting to go, oh, awesome. I haven't done these things. Let me just start looking into it because I have the money to do it. Now, the really interesting part is what if you said, okay, I'm going to have, um, this is my goal. I want to make $3,000 trading. And when I hit that $3,000, I'll be able to pull it out and I'll pay for the cruise. Yeah, Absolutely. How much easier would that be to take a profit when you see it? Uh, that would make it easier. Yeah, it would make it a lot easier. And the cool part is when you go on that cruise, let's think a little bit past it. Let's say you love it because you probably will, man. The Alaska cruise is so epic. It's not high seas. It's not big waves. Um, like you're not going to get seasick or I wouldn't imagine anyone would get seasick. The food is really good because the Alaskan cruises are a little higher end. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, you can go on a carnival cruise line, booze cruise, like no kidding for like a hundred bucks for four days. Like it's, wow. I mean, yeah, they're, they're so cheap. They're almost free, but like an Alaska cruise, it's a little higher end, a little bit of a nicer boat, nicer food, better rooms. And uh, yeah, they're, they're legit. But anyway, the reason I'm bringing it up is imagine that you are finished with it. Do you think that would be an experience that your children would remember forever and be grateful for? Yeah, for sure. And then at some point, if they do that, what if they in turn learn the stock market because you tell them, hey, I bought this cruise line from the stock market. Would that be a cool thing for them or do they already trade? Yeah, well, uh, it's funny. My, my kids are uh, 18 and 19 and every morning they come down at you know six, seven o'clock getting ready for uh, school 
and they're always like, how's the stock market, dad? What's going on? And so I'm, I'm reeling them in slowly. That's awesome. <laughs> that is of- so cool, man. Absolutely. So cool. Yeah. Because I mean, you know, if you tell them openly, like you just start talking about money, have this conversation, look, um, son and is it son and daughter, daughter and son? Yep, son and daughter. Yep. Okay, that's what I thought. So I, I was picking up on. So son and daughter, you talk to your son and daughter and you go, Hey, listen, here's the goal. I'm going to try to make, here's how much this, here's how much the cruise costs, right? Um, my room, your room, your room. Cause you're probably going to get three different rooms. I would assume. Cause trust me, they're going to want to party a little bit. Um, <laughs> And they'll be the youngest person on the cruise, by the way, like by, yeah. tw- by 20 years. Um, <laughs> the nightclubs are fun. It'll be your, your son, your daughter, and like three other people. But anyway, um, you talk to them and you say, hey, listen, this is how much the cruise is going to cost. This is how much the room's going to cost. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to do my absolute best. I'm going to trade Carnival Cruise Lines, Norwegian Cruise Lines, and Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines. And I'm going to make $3,000 between now and March. And if I make that $3,000 between now and March, then we're going to buy the cruise and we're going to go in April. What do you guys think? And dude, that'll be like a bonding experience, man, where you guys get to talk about it. And then when you're on the boat, they're going to tell everyone like, Hey, how'd you go on this boat? Like my dad freaking traded carnival cruise lines, made three grand, brought the, bought the ticket. They're going to be all pumped. And they're, they're just going to, they're going to link positivity with trading the stock market. It's like full circle. Yeah, dude. That's the thing. And then they're going to think that you're a freaking hero. Well, of course. Because you are. Of course. You know? And so that's the thing is like, but then they'll, they'll think, oh man, what if he does it again? And the cool part is you can, you're going to have that ability. Once you just really master this, which I think you're doing really great at right now. Once you start getting in the habit of this, you can just perpetually do it over and over and over and over again, you know? Yeah, the next one is Johnny Guarco in Hawaii. Boom. I love it, dude. Yes. Any, yes, anybody, yes, yes. That, anybody that gets up at 2, 3 a.m. in the morning to to entertain people like me is is got it going on. He's a in good my- guy. He's a great person, man. I would do anything for Johnny in a heartbeat. Yeah, like, he, he's a great guy. So I think that's awesome. What I would say is uh, go ahead and start figuring out how much that ticket is. Right. right on. Just just start piecing it together. Start coming up with, OK, boom, boom, boom. Here's the cruise in March. That's going to be three grand. Here's the trip to Hawaii from Washington. You could probably fly southwest from Seattle right into Honolulu. Round yep. trip, you're probably looking at maybe five hundred dollars a person uh, plus your hotel and food. OK, maybe that's three thousand dollars. Maybe do that in June. And then you have another three thousand dollars. You just kind of come up with three thousand dollar trips for the next, you know, two, three years. Yeah, absolutely. It's in the universe now. I got to do it. I love it, Doug. I love it, man. Well, hey, when you go on the cruise, send me a picture. Let me know how it goes. And uh, I can't wait to hear all about the trip. Absolutely. Thanks so much for everything you do, man. I really appreciate you. My pleasure. My pleasure. My pleasure. Killer, killer. Anil says, book it now. (laughs) You can probably find some great deals. Probably find some great deals. And yes, I know the whole COVID situation is going to make things a little sticky, but um I am in in a national country, ladies and gentlemen, and COVID's happening and I'm here. So I can say that, yes, there in in Canada, you have much, much more restrictions, but at some point, at some point, we'll all be able to travel again. Everything will be fine. But let me read to you the quote that is arguably changed my life probably more than anything else I've ever read in my life. I want to read to you something that is so powerful and it's so incredible. And I can't wait to share it with you. I know you all probably know exactly what I'm talking about, but here is what's really holding us back. And when, when you read this, when you hear it, you have to know initially it seems ridiculous. It seems illogical. It seems dumb. It seems like there's no way it can be true. Like it doesn't make any sense. And then you meditate on it for a while, three or four minutes. You think about it, actually think about it, really think about it. And then you realize how right on and spot on it is. Type a nine if you're interested in reading the quote that changed my life and so many other people's lives forever. 
This is a quote that I think you can, you should, and you want, if you want to next level your life, print this out and read it every day to your family, to your loved ones, to your wife, to your husband, to your kids. Mary, Mary Ann Williamson. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light not our darkness that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it is in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Ladies and gentlemen, get it. Get it. Think about that. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Everyone thinks that you're, I'm gonna fail. I'm not going to do this because if I do this, I'm going to fail. I'm going to quit. I'm going to give up. People are going to think I'm dumb. People are going to think I'm stupid. People are going to think I'm worthless. People are going to think I'm not good enough. But that is not what is holding you back. You have a fear that you might actually obtain what you want and you're not going to know what to do with it. When you have everything you want, all of the money, all of the success, all of the kids, all of the happiness, all of the wealth, all of the spirituality, all of the sexuality, everything that you could possibly want, you're afraid that you're going to give it up, throw it in, fail when you have it because you simply do not know what to do when it is yours. That is your fear. That is my fear. That is our fear. That is what holds me back the most. The what's next. Remember in the movie, The Joker? Not The Joker. It was the darkest night when the Joker's like, I'm like a crazed dog chasing a car. I don't actually know what I'll do if I catch it. We don't know what is going to happen when we're there. Let that sink in because it's not about the money. Money is liter it is literally seashells. A few hundred years ago, money was chickens and goats. It is a subconscious fear that is holding me back, that is holding you back, that is holding us back. It is the fact that we can shine so bright that we can illuminate everyone and our fear is that if we illuminate so brightly, other people who are around us will feel insecure. Who will feel insecure? Who will we fear? Who is it? Andrea says the people we care about. Yes, who? Who is it? The people that we care about. It's our friends. It's our family. It's probably your partner, your husband, your wife, your children. It's the people who look up to us, the people that depend on us. We're afraid that if we become so powerful, they won't love us anymore. We will become so powerful that they will not love us anymore, that they will feel like we sold our soul to the devil, like we did something illegal. We received all of this money and they're going to be jealous of us. Therefore, we don't obtain it. That is what you are afraid of. That is what I am afraid of. That's what so many people fear. It's that insecurity. That when we become so magnificently powerful, 
you're going to break up with your husband because he deserves to be broken up with because he's a terrible person. Or you're going to break up with your wife because you're going to be better than her. That's your fear. What if you bring that person with you? What if you bring them along on the journey? What if you build them up? What if they build up together? Do you have to leave this person? Can you do it together? The answer is absolutely. Or what if you do break up? <laughs> what if that happens? Okay. Okay. Life continues. So be it. Go find a better version of someone that is willing and able to grow with you and go help other people and be magnificent and be phenomenal. And my friends, think about this word right here. Your playing small does not serve the world. Your playing small does not serve the world. You're not helping anyone by avoiding pleasure, by avoiding happiness, by avoiding money. <laughs> Jeremiah says it barely serves me. You're not going to be able to serve the world if you are poor, broke, mentally. Monetarily is whatever. That can be irrelevant. Notice that I, unless I'm wrong, can you guys remind me? Can we, do we need to read this again? I don't see the word money anywhere in this quote. Am I missing it? Is that, is there, a, I don't see money. Are we talking, wait a minute. We're not talking about money. Wait a minute. There's other ways that people can be rich. <laughs> We were talking about this the other day. Who's the most impactful person that you've ever known or heard of or thought of that was extremely poor? Let's throw in some names. They were financially not well off. Jay says, Mike Tyson. Well, no, not really. He's still very, very wealthy. Mother Teresa. Yep, I'd have to go with her for sure. Jesus. Um, yeah, he had no money at all. Buddha. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Darian, that's a beautiful one. My mom. <laughs> I love that. I love that so much. That's kind of like my mom. My mom is the most, God, she's the most beautiful soul. Like she's so incredible and she's so poor mentally. She's so poor mentally. She is just magnificent. Like she would do anything for anyone at any moment. Money is nowhere in this quote. It's not money that's holding you back. That is a belief. That's a belief. You are thinking, I have this amount of money so I can only do this. You do not need money to serve. You do not need money to put yourself in a position or a place or a location where you can impact human beings with your hugs. And if you don't have the money, other people will give it to you. Just ask. If you don't have the money, other people do. Go impact the world. Go serve. Go pour your heart into other people somewhere, somehow, and see if you don't become more wealthy financially as well as, as, well as spiritually and emotionally. And then check this piece out. Check this piece out. We subconsciously give other people permission to do the same when we let our own light shine. That's why people are so gravitated to amazing human beings is because there's, they give us the ability to go, oh my gosh, that person's on stage giving the audience so much power and motivation and excitement. That was one of my favorite things in the world when I was young. Like I would watch this so much was Les Brown when he gave his presentation about being in the studio, right? Drink, rock, drink, right? If you guys haven't seen that, I'll be happy to share it with you later, but it's just a, such a great, great piece of art. And I watched that 
video hundreds of times. I was just so fired up. I was like, man, I want to do that. Cause he, he let his light shine and unconsciously without knowing it, he was pouring into my heart. And I was like, Shh, I want to do that. He's giving me permission to do that. I want to go liberate people's fears. I want to go help people learn how to dream. So if you want to check out either the book, it's on Audible, it's everywhere you would possibly want it. Return to Love by Mary Williamson. Um, get it. it. Listen to it. It's on YouTube for free. It's all over the place. Pay for it, get it for free, whatever. She doesn't care. <laughs> Do whatever you need. Great book. Very, very good. And I did not even know she was a a, a, a woman who was alive still until like seven, no, nine months ago. I didn't know she was alive. When I first read that quote, the first time I heard it, I think it was Coach Carter with Samuel L. Jackson, I think, if that's the right movie. And they're talking about something, and one of the guys comes into the you know basketball stadium, and that's where he says it's, it's not our light. You know, it's not our, not our fear and adequacy. It's our fear that we're powerful beyond all measure. And he does that quote. Carolyn says, no way, Course of Miracles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now we're talking. <clears throat> Joseph says, I was just writing the last slide when you change slides. I can go back, my friend. Don't worry. Here you go. So Joseph's handwriting this thing. My boy, Joseph Smith III. Any questions while we're here? Anything you guys want to ask? Anything that's on your mind? Anything you want to talk about? If you guys have anything, just let me know. Rick says, why are you so awesome? <laughs> I appreciate that compliment, man. Thank you. Um, this is why. This is why, dude. I no longer play. I no longer play small. I want to serve the world. You know, and I want I want to liberate others from fear and from depression. And I, my mission in life is to enrich lives with mentally liberating education. And that's that's why I'm here. That is my that's my calling, man. Greg says, how do we liberate? How do we liberate from fears that we may not know we have? It's a good question. Anil, you want to tackle that one? Yeah, don't worry about it if you don't know about it. <laughs> no, but the, the thing is this. I was suicidal in 2008, and I became a billionaire. And I'll tell you all exactly how to do that. Change your currency. Stop using the US dollar as your currency. Change your currency to love, making a difference, caring, guiding, nurturing, being playful, having fun, being generous. You will all become billionaires. Don't focus on the money, focus on you. Become the best version of yourself. And you'll be amazed. You'll absolutely be amazed when your vibrational energy changes, your thought processes change. You'll lose the attachment, you'll lose the fear, and you'll make beautiful choices in life. Your family will benefit. Everything happens for you. And yes, you can have everything without fear of loss. It's there. Just as uh, Jeremy says, just accept it. It's okay. Change your love, your currency to love. Anil, my man. What are you? A, what are you, a love doctor or something? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna find out. <laughs> That's right. Change your currency to love. That is so incredible. I've never heard that before. I am fantastically enamored by that, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, my friends, ask yourself this question: What are you really capable of, and why haven't you done it yet? Why haven't you done it? Just ask yourself, all right? And when when it says, because I don't have enough money, okay, cool, that's not the answer, all right? 
So if you say, I'm lazy, okay, cool. Good answer, you're lazy, that's fine. How long do you wanna be lazy for? You get to determine that, you get to pick, you get to choose. But it's not the money, that's not the reason. You can say that, you can you can do the cop out, like, oh, I don't have, it's, it's money. I'm like, no, it's not, it's something else. You're just scared of it, it's the unknown, you haven't done it, and you don't know what's gonna happen on the other side. Right? Will Smith says fear is not real. It is a product of the thoughts you create. Danger is very real. Fear is a choice. Type in a five if you've never been skydiving. Okay, fear is a choice. Fear is a choice. Now, if you're like, oh, I'm terrified of doing it. Okay, man, that's, that's fear. I've only skydived once. I'm not going to say that I'm a professional skydiver. It's just a, it's just an example, right? My girl skydived once, and we'll probably go together at some point, just for just for the fun of it. But it's one of those things where it's like, eh, it was cool, you know, it's fun. Frank Cole has been skydiving, or so I've heard. <laughs> Fear is a choice, my friends. Fear is not real; it is a choice. So I want to give you all some homework. We have a, we've had so many really, really good breakthroughs and I have one piece of homework. I'm going to give a homework in every single class. Next class you're going to want to attend and class five is just going to be an absolute life-changing session. Please tell anyone you can who's struggling with any aspect of their life to be on, to be in class five. But here's your homework. Here's what I would love for you to do. A lot of you have asked the question, how do I know what my fears are? How do I know what my hurdles are? How do I know what's holding me back? How do I cope with this? How do I create this? If you want to know a lot of hows, go work with someone who specializes in hows, who specializes in understanding, who specializes in empathy, who specializes in being able to read between the lines and create and help you dream. I want you to go to this particular website. I'm going to send it in Slack, but this is Svetlana's Limitless Creator, the dream course. And I'm going to share Anil's course tomorrow. And then I'll share one of the things I would love all of you guys to go to on Friday. This is a must do. Craig Levine, how how has this changed your life single-handedly? I'm going to bring you on, and I love you, Craig. I'm going to give you less than two minutes. <laughs> you, have, you have less than 120 seconds. Can you just let people know, has this impacted you at all, and, and how has it impacted you? So I would just say it's impacted me in a limitless way. I don't even have that many words to say. It's just a must do. It's a must do. Simple enough. I can tell you guys that this morning I had a meeting. Yeah, you know, I had an appointment with Svetlana. I will trade Jeremy's for, for Svetlana any day of the week. <laughs> <laughs> you should. It's a fact. Facts. You should. I, here's a, here's the, the truth of the matter is, ladies and gentlemen, this is without question 100% true. I'm very good at the stock market. Svelana is more powerful than I am by every stretch of the imagination. I'm really, really good at giving people hows and like I can help you make more money like immediately. Like that's easy. Everyone everyone who's coached with me has made, I mean, you're going to make more money, right? Craig, you've made more money, I think. More, more money for sure. But yeah. uh, with Svetlana, I, I, I make more love. around. There me. you cool go. Around. There you go. <laughs> Gina says it will completely make you re-examine your life. So anyway, long story short, ladies and gentlemen, and Craig, thank you, man. I love you. Can't wait to see you. Uh, long story short, try it. Go do something you've never done. Have you ever gone to a course that teaches you how to dream, how to, how to create and write dreams? If you haven't, do this course. It's very good and it's extremely affordable. It really is. Gina's done it. She loves it. I've done it twice. Matt's Long's done it. Craig's done it twice. Brittany Turner's done it twice. It's very, very good. 
So the link is in the chat pane. If you're watching this in the recording, I'll put it in the description box in YouTube. And if you just go to this website, thelightfreedom.mykajabi.com forward slash dreams course, just go try it. John says you didn't pass the first time. No, dude, I absolutely passed. <laughs> the thing is, I had so many dreams come true. I started, get, I started, it was terrifying. It was really, really, really scary. So I did it again because I was like, there's no way this can work again. And I started creating more dreams and those came true as well. It's incredible. Yeah, it's amazing. So just a very, very small, super, super small example. Um, I did this in uh, my very first class in April. Um, at the time, uh, Real Life Trading had 313 subscribers, I think, something like that. And the very, very first, the very first class, he was like, okay, hey, write down some dreams. I was like, done. I want my dream. I want, I want 400 subscribers at Real Life Trading. That would be the, the biggest thing that's ever happened in my life ever. That would be life changing. That'd be phenomenal. That'd be me being able to work with 400 people at any given time. And you know what she said to me? Why are you serving so small? Four, 400 is the best you can do? <laughs> that's, the, that's all you got, 400? And I was like, bro, I've been trying to get to 400 for five years. Don't you tell me that I'm dreaming small. She's like, well, then write down that dream and release it. So I did. And I accomplished it three weeks later. What a weak dream. <laughs> three, three whole weeks. There you go. And so now in the bigger dream that I released... I simply wrote down that I wanted RLT, I wanted real life trading to impact 4 million people. How can real life trading impact 4 million people? And the wildest thing started coming together. Like we got our education put into the federal prison system of America. What? Right? We. we we had, um, what's it called, uh, babe? Orf orphanages. We had orphanages reach out to us. Um, the Miami orphanage through, the, through another trader who had the connection who said, hey, Jeremy teaches kids classes. They need to reach out. The, these kids need to learn this stuff. And so we, we started working with orphanages. I mean, just all the amount of people, it started slowly unfolding so quickly. And I started to being able to see, wow, this could actually happen. This is this is right around the corner. Like this, this could this could be achieved. At a time where four million seems seemed unobtainable. It seemed like it was a laughable goal. Like there's no way I could ever do this. It's just it's, this can't happen. So again, my friends, if you have never done a, if you've never done this, if this sounds hokey, you should do it. Simple as that. Simple as that. If it sounds like this is this sounds weird. This sounds, this sounds strange. This sounds dumb. Then you should do it because you've never done it before because you're scared. That's what I did. I was terrified and I took it and then I fell in love with her and now we're going to get married. So check that out. All right. <laughs> Joseph says, I told you when I meet you, you was a bad man. <laughs> yeah, man. Student falling for the teacher. So. Um, Andrea says, what made you take this course? I mean, you achieved a lot. What was the reason of it? I I've achieved a lot. But again, I live in a world, um, on Andrea, where I do everything that I haven't done before. Simple as that. That's really it. I mean, I just do things I've never done. So I just live in that world where I'm like, oh, I've never done this. Okay, I'm gonna go do it. I'm gonna experience life. Limitless creator, the dreams course. I don't know what that is. I'm gonna, let me go do it. No clue what it's going to be about, but I'm going to go through it. It was really, really great. So that's your homework. Go check it out. Go sign up for it. Please. It will change your life. And now I want to change some lives from other people. I got my boy Anil in the building. You've already heard him. I got my girl Svet and I got my ginormous head. 
I've had to shrink this down to size so that it didn't like overwhelm these two. <laughs> because because the, the, my head's massive, all right? I, I, can't, I can't find glasses or hats that fit. So type in a nine if you want us to change your life right now tonight. Uh, we'll start talking to you. All right, Edward was the first one that types in a nine. Okay, Ed, I'm coming for you, my friends. All right, Edward. So ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna have a few minutes of discussing with Edward and we'll see where we go and how long it takes. I know Edward personally. I love Edward. Hey, I was, what's up, brother? Um, one thing that Edward is, one thing that stands out about Edward, ladies and gentlemen, across any other person I've worked with, he's one of the few people that's done everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything. If I said, hey, do this, he's done it. Does, it doesn't say when, he just goes, okay, done. If I say, hey, yo, Ed, go do this, done. It comes back, done. The people that do that, end up succeeding in life. It's that simple. It's not because I'm smarter than Edward at all. It's simply because I've done the things that he wants to do. And so I just simply know what he needs to do. So I'm really looking forward to this conversation, man. How are you, brother? How you been? Good. Hang in there, you. Doing solid, brother. Doing solid. So talk to me, man. What, uh, where do you want to go? What's holding you back? If anything, or are you just here to celebrate? Um, I had a question before. Um, how do we get past our fear? How do we not get too past our fear so that we get into like danger zones of just uh, kind of just trade to trade? You know, I, I don't want to get over the fear and then not be fearful and kind of just just trade and then, you know, kind of fail. From yeah, there. yeah, that's a fair question. I mean, you're going to have rules um, when that when that occurs, like you're going to have just rules that you live by. So, for example, me, I have no fear at all of trading at, at all. Zero fears. And so I'll take trades because they, they fit my plan. Long as they are in my criteria, my, my zone and everything like today, I took a bunch of trades and just got absolutely punched in the face. But mm -hmm. they all met everything that I normally have to do. So by tomorrow, I'm not going to forget all about them. But I do have certain rules that limit how much I can trade, how much I can lose so that I do and I am able to follow a plan. Gotcha. Yeah, that's a great question, man. But that's that's a good one. I mean, it's, but it's, it's, it's easy. Because in essence, you know, a lot of people are going to say, well, what if I have no fear, I'll just take every single trade. Yeah, if you have the money, and, the, and you've planned it, and it fits, it fits all of your criteria, you can and you're going to have bigger drawdowns. Right? Four years from now, Edward, then you'll then your whole account size right now. Yeah. You know, whatever your account size is, doesn't matter. In four years from now, your daily drawdowns could be bigger than your account sizes are today. Yeah, having anxiety about that, not being able to look at my account, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah so, you took, so you took me up on that challenge. Now you're doing seven days, not, not looking at the accounts. Yep, started at 9 p.m. last night. Well, <laughs> it's probably a good thing for today. Day one, 24 hours incoming. Oh, uh, I love it, man. I Brandon love it, I thinks love it. I'm... I'm going, I'm suicidal, but you know, I just told them I'm just going to do it. You know, it's now is a good time as any. And if I can do it now, then I can do it later. Cause you know, it's a, if, if we're at all time highs and it's going to go, then it's going to go. Yep. I have my stops in place and let's go. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So Ed, um, what's the next four years looks like for you, man? Where are you going with life? Ooh. Um, I want to keep trading. I want to, get to the comma club um you know the million dollars is, is a is a good goal you know within two to four years totally that, that's kind of my goal and you know i i want to take my family on vacations to europe um whenever covid is done and i want to pay for all all their travels that's a big goal of mine it's a beautiful goal it's yeah. a beautiful goal let me ask you this question do you believe that that amount of money could come into your life without trading for it Yes. Give me two um, ways in which you could. Um, investments in other fields and um, my job um, could net me that kind of money. Okay. And other investments and stores. So I I, I'm not just relying solely on trading. I love it, man. I love it. Okay. So do you, do you feel like anything's holding you back or do you feel like you're just on the path to where exactly you, where you want to be? Do you feel like everything's just coming in line for you right now? Um, it is and it isn't. I just feel like, you know, 
trading's up and down and you know i'm getting frustrated sometimes i'm i'm, I'm getting in too early i'm getting in too late sometimes i'm not getting in at all it it just gets frustrating and it's this it's this cyclical path in my head of like am i doing this right am i doing this wrong so i'm going back and forth yeah which means like you're you're just sometimes you're doubting yourself right yeah it's like hey i'm buying the dip uh okay that didn't work and then you know i said another limit it's like oh i didn't get it well it did dip but it just didn't dip there so right it's a little frustrating why do you doubt yourself um i tell myself it's not enough experience but um i think it's a trust issue of mine and just not trusting myself and my own gut um i feel like it's just too new to me so that's why i'm doubting myself yeah and that's again this is a trading psychology class that's a very very accurate thing i mean that, that's okay there is a certain level of the how that comes in play how long have you been trading, Edward? Since April. Yeah. So not even a year yet. Not even almost a year. Yeah. This is brand new. Yeah. And so I would agree. I mean, there there is a certain how component that's with with trading of where it's going to come and how it's going to all play out. But mm -hmm. what you have to do when you are feeling like you just don't understand, like you don't get it, like you don't totally, totally understand what's, what's happening. You got to remind yourself yeah. of where you've come and what you've already learned. Yeah. Sometimes when I get frustrated, I just um, tell myself, Hey, you've already come so far. This is what you've done. You know, you, you've grown your account by 30% from April. Like you should be proud of that. And I kind of just let success go by and I don't really celebrate it. So I'm, I'm doing more to celebrate it. Like, you know, today I bought a nest protect, for my house just to take money out of my account and celebrate the fact that, hey, wife, I bought this from trading and kind of celebrate it that way. So taking sure. little bits and try to do that. Dude, that's huge. That's huge. Yeah. Like I said, you're, I, you're, I'm not very good at that, celebrating. Yeah. yeah you know, I kind of just like, hey, I got to win. I move on and I kind of just dread on my losses or my red PL. So I do that a lot. What are some other ways that you and your wife can celebrate? in the next two months. Dude, I really want to take her out traveling, but COVID's just not cool right now. Um, <laughs> we, we like to go eat, so I'm finding anything that's to go, you know, that's really nice and fancy and trying to book those. So that's kind of what we're doing right now and just taking her anywhere local just to go out. Yeah, what about an, what about an eating experience in your house? Have you guys done like any like cooking projects together? Uh, no, not yet. That might be a good idea. We've taken cooking classes before. Well, yeah, but I mean, let's say you guys like, you know, three days in a row, you just carve out time for dinner where you specifically just spend time creating some type of masterpiece or attempting to, in my case. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know, this is just the small things. Like if that's what she likes and that's what you like. Yeah. And you want to reward her, reward her with time. I mean, because again, I think most people out there, most people in a relationship, right? We have the love languages. I don't know your wife, I've never met her, but I would assume mm -hmm. one of her love languages is gonna be active service. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, it's high up there for most women. Um, yes. Naturally. And so find ways to do it that way, man. Because again, it doesn't have to be specifically about money or things that you, you know, traveling. Obviously you guys will travel together, but even yeah. when you're traveling, Right, you could just have someone with you that's traveling with you, but if you're not there for them and you're just, you know, knee, nose to your phone the whole time, mm -hmm. then the traveling is irrelevant. Yeah, good point. I like that. Yeah. So the the other thing that I mentioned earlier, though, when I said think about how far you've come, I don't mean just in trading. I mean trading is obviously a good aspect. I mean in life, dude, you're kind of a badass. Edward. Thank you, Jeremy. I appreciate that. Right? I mean, you're pretty awesome, dude. Thank you. So sometimes like you have to, like Anil and Svelana both mentioned last night, you, you do have to celebrate who you are and tell other people how great you are sometimes. Just brag on yourself. 
I feel like you don't do that a lot. I feel like you don't do it nearly enough. I feel like you don't totally yeah. sink into how awesome. Yeah, yeah. Our family kind of is pretty down low. Um, I don't know if it's a Taiwanese thing, an Asian thing, or my family thing, but you know, we don't we don't celebrate our success or we don't brag. Like we just do it and accomplish it, and then we move on. Like that's right. not how we were raised. So, yeah. I, I agree. Like I, I don't say what I do. I, I kind of take bragging as a like more like a a negative, yeah, uh, instead yeah. of a positive. Agreed. So, and it, yeah. it's not. It, it, it's definitely a cultural thing. Not that I would know, but I'm just reading some of the comments from the uh, from the from the chat. But keep in mind that there there is bragging, and then there is simply informing people of what you've done because it's really exciting and you're just, you want to impact their life. So you're just sharing a story with them. Right. Right. For example, it was a terrible example, but um, my, my family loves when I tell the story of how, when I was 16, I was trying to be like a stand up comic and I, I went on this random trip and I was in Brooklyn, New York and I was at Pace university and Pace university had a um, had a what's it called talent show for the college students, and I signed up for the talent show, and my talent show was doing comedy. Anyway, so I did the talent show, and I didn't know anything about comedy at the time. I just knew I wanted to do it, so I stole all of the comedians' acts that I knew: Ellen DeGeneres, Robin Williams, uh, Jim Gaffigan. Like I just stole their jokes and just retold them, and ended up winning <laughs> and ended up winning first place. But oh wow, yeah, it was really cool, um, and, and that was exciting. That was that was a very very fun thing but when i tell people that story i could tell it in a way where it's just funny and it's just humorous i'm just sharing people with what i did or i could brag about it there's always two ways to do it and i agree i don't think i've mastered the art of bragging i don't think most people do but in general having those conversations and being open allows you to circulate your thoughts and as you circulate your thoughts everyone grows together hmm. I never thought and, edward that. Edward, yes. can I can I say something? Please. You know the the important thing here is the intent. Is your intent to show off, or is your intent to inspire? You know, when you have pure intent, it's not bragging. Right. That's the difference. And by you showing up that way, you could inspire your whole community to live a, an amazing life. You could be the leader of the leaders. You have right. a duty to be the best version of yourself. So, uh, can I ask you a question? Yes. Do you know how to drive a car? Yes. Okay. Do you remember the first time you started to drive a car? Yes. Okay. Now, when you drive today compared to when you were driving then, it's a big difference, isn't there? Yes, for sure. Okay. So, today you're uh, unconsciously competent. Meaning mm -hmm. that, you know, you can drive for 20 miles and not know where you've been. Be right. But, you know, even if someone steps in the way or the, the lights change or someone swerves into you, you're going to handle it. It's the same with trading. Okay. Right. In a month, two months, three months, you'll be a better driver of your mm -hmm. own destiny. Right. Okay. Like on autopilot. Yeah. And, you, you know, you're focusing a little bit on the negative. Mother Teresa was asked to march against war and she refused. Everyone would stand. She said, I will not march against war, but I will march for peace. Mm -hmm. Okay. So change some of the languaging that you use. And I promise you, it will change how you show up. Gotcha. Okay. So will you role play with me? Yeah. Okay. I want you to be your wife. Okay. Okay. Honey, can I ask you a question? Sure. Of all the places in the world, where would you like to go? What would give you the greatest joy? Going on a trip with you to Australia. Okay. And is that really, really, really what you want? Yes, that is really, really what I want. And what would you do there? Um, we would go see the kangaroos. Um, we would go explore all of Australia. Um, haven't done much research on it, but yeah, that's where I want to go with you. Okay. So I'd like you to put your hand on my heart 
and look me in the eye. Mm -hmm. Ready? Yes. I promise you, I will take you to Australia by December 31st, 2022. It is my solemn vow that you are going to have the most amazing time. I will never let you down on this promise. Sounds great. Okay, do you believe me? Yes. How does it feel? It feels great. Yeah. So, uh, Edward, imagine how she's going to feel. Imagine how you're going to feel. Love. You see, you always have to have somewhere a mm -hmm. goal or something special. And you can enjoy it now. You know, like when you book a vacation, you can enjoy it the minute you book it. Mm -hmm. And you, you can visualize you going... To Australia, the aeroplane landing and all that stuff. Yeah. It's immensely doable. Yep, it is. So who I am is this. I'm an unstoppable ninja warrior, freedom fighter that will move, touch and inspire 1,000 million people by December 2222. That's who I am. Okay. Yes. Who are you? I'm an unstoppable person that will take my wife to Australia by December 2022. Okay. So I would say something like this. I'm Edward. I'm Edward. I'm a force for greatness. I'm a force for greatness. That will, ins that will inspire my entire community to celebrate their wins. That will inspire my community to celebrate their wins. Okay. Can you, can you feel this a difference? Yes. Okay, that can be your identity. You can tweak it. But when you live into your identity, you will show up differently. You're, do you have kids? No, not yet. Okay. So maybe after Australia, you might have a few. <laughs> Most likely. That's but that will become your identity. Yes. Wow. We, we didn't come this far to fail. Okay? None of us. Right. Agreed. Thank you for sharing that. Thank, oh, thank you. you. Thank you, Edward. That's amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, did you guys feel that? Did you hear it in his oh, voice? My man, Edward's on fire. He's a force for greatness. He's going to help his community celebrate. And again, man, if you do it with that pure heart and that pure intention, Edward, even if you have the smallest of wins, it doesn't matter if it's a hundred dollars and you buy and you buy a new thing. And then you guys go on a trip. And when you take a trip, you tell your whole family, guys, I did this with the stock market. It's so fantastic. I love you all. We're going. It's going to yeah. change the world, man. And again, I know you love trading and you're going to do this forever and I'll be doing it with you. Every step awesome. of the way. Awesome, let's do it. All right, brother. Love Thanks, Jeremy. My pleasure, dude. My pleasure. Thanks, guys. Yep. So ladies and gentlemen, we have absolutely plenty of time for one more person. The next person who spells my fiance's first name correctly. Spell her name in the chat pane. First person who gets it, we're going to bring on the microphone. And there is Nancy is the winner. So Nancy, oh, <laughs> she specializes in working with women. <laughs> so Nancy, you won. Um, you spoke in, in, you typed it incorrectly. Her name is spelled Svetlana, S-V-E-T-L-A-N-A. -E Thank you everyone for knowing that. I really appreciate it. All right. So Nancy, I just clicked on uh, allowing you to talk. Yep. Oh, beautiful. by the way, everyone sounds so good on their audio. Does everyone have like professional cameras and microphones? It's amazing. I'm on a 10 year old MacBook Pro. So I guess that's uh, says a lot for Apple, I guess. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Well, I'm going to let um, you and Svetlana talk, Nancy. Hi, Svetlana. How are you? So good. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Oh, so good to hear you. Good to hear you. Yeah. What is going on? You know, I have a question because everyone always on these things always speaks about, and Svetlana, you and I have worked together already, so. Yes, we have. Know. Yes, and we will invite Anil in too uh, because we have worked together. And I do know your soul and I do know how incredible and powerful you are and what an incredible trader you are as well. So, um, yes, share with us. I just have a question um, because oftentimes, well, Jeremy and everybody always speaks about everyone doing things for 
their wife, their children in Trilala. And I don't have a husband and I don't have children. So I always wonder, I almost feel like I have to reframe something somehow because I'm on my own, that's all. So anyway, so that's the only reason I kind of wondered about, <clears throat> I don't know, kind of where or how to think of things a bit differently, I guess, because I'm kind of feeling like I'm doing it for myself and not saying that's selfish, but I just feel like it's I'm just doing it for myself. That's all. Yes, but I also do know how many people you touch and how beautiful your friends are and some of your dreams as well. But I would love actually, because I do know, um, I know you, I would love Anil to work with you and to for you to, to experience him because he's so, so, so incredible and I love him so deeply. And Anil, do you mind to... Um, to help Nancy here. Um, I would sure. love her to experience your love and your light. Me too. I just love everything Anil does. <laughs> Guys, can you type in a form of this? If you love Anil, Anil Gupta, the love doctor. Yes. So, uh, Nancy, there is a formula for happiness, which is happiness is equal to G cubed. The first G is give. Your time, your energy, your love, your commitment, your joy, your gift, your money. Give it away, not wanting anything in return. Mm -hmm. The second is you have to be grateful for what you have and not focus on what you don't have. And the third is you have to grow emotionally, physically, spiritually, mentally. Okay? Okay. Now, at any given time, one of those three Gs will be below the rest. So everyone can do this right now. Write down... Tell me, what is your lowest G? Is it give? Is it grow? Is it gratitude? Right now, if everyone uh, write down what you think your lowest G is, is gratitude. Good. So what's yours, Nancy? Mine's probably grow, because I literally have things all over my condo about gratitude, and I say it every day, all the time. And, um, right, well, sorry, what was the third one? Uh, give, grow, gratitude. Okay, so give and grow could potentially be similar, but I would say growth. Because I feel like, and I've said to Svetlana in the past, I feel like I've done a lot of these works before, and yet I don't feel like I've actually, obviously I have changed, but yet I feel like I haven't changed, some, not necessarily enough, but something like that. Okay, so uh, are you a great giver? Uh, I do give a lot. And I know also that I probably could give more. Okay. Are you, uh, uh, do you find it hard to take? Sometimes, yes. And Jeremy could probably speak to this one because he and I had a conversation about this once. But yes, I have a hard time receiving or okay. yeah. or taking, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So uh, imagine you had $10 million in your bank account. And if you work with Jeremy, that will happen very soon. <laughs> that, that's a plug, Jeremy. <laughs> okay. Imagine you have ten million dollars. Every day you have to give one exactly one million dollars a day away. How many days can you give for? Sorry, how many days could I give it away? Yeah, a million dollars a day. You have ten million dollars. How many days can you give a million dollars a day away for? So in theory, that would be ten. Ten days. It's not a trick question. I promise okay, you. Okay, gotcha. Okay. okay. <laughs> if if every day someone deposits over a million dollars into that account, how long could you give a million dollars a day away for? Yeah, it'd be infinite. Infinite. Yeah. So are you are you receiving that money or are you taking that money? Oh, okay. Yeah. So I, yeah. Okay. So fair enough. So you're probably. So thinking of the terminology differently. Yeah. So in order to give, you have to receive. Right. And the more you receive, the more you can give. Right. Now, if, if Nancy, uh, you said to me, Neil, I, I'd like to give you my book. Imagine you've written a book. You said to me, I, Neil, I'd like to donate my book to you. And I said, no. You'd feel offended, wouldn't you? If I wrote a book and, you, and I try to give it to you and you said no yeah you'd be upset a little bit yeah so we'd be unhappy correct yeah you and you'd be thinking wow he denied me the gift of giving me this to him 
Yes. So when people try and help you and you say no or you don't receive it well, it's exactly the same thing. Okay. Okay. So if you start to receive with joy, you will start to notice a vibrational shift in you. Okay. You will grow. And you won't have this feeling that you should give more. Because when you feel that, you beat yourself up. When you give a smile, a thank you, it's a give. It's not, it has nothing to do with money. A kind thought, a generous thought, a gentle kindness, a nice word here or there, some inspiring words, some calming words. Okay. okay. So I want to give you one sentence that will change your life. Okay. I think you might want to write this one down. Ready? No, but hang, but I will listen to the recording and I know what time it is. So, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, I, I, and I'll type it out and I'll send it to Svetlana. There's nowhere to get to. Mm -hmm. There is nothing missing. Mm -hmm. There is nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. And you're already there. Okay. A lot of people are living in a world, there's something missing, there's something wrong. They're trying to get somewhere. And Jeremy's been talking about this all today. But you're already there. You have it all, all of you. Right, it's already, here. it's already here. Yeah. yeah, don't beat yourself up. Don't be afraid. Don't live in fear, but live in courage. Be courageous. That, to me, is actually more powerful than what you said earlier. Be courageous. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So, who are you? Who am I? Yeah. You heard who I was. You heard who Edward was. Who are you? Well, I'm a traitor. Because that's what Jeremy told me to say from yesterday to today. <laughs> so, okay. so. Um, yes. I'm a beautiful human being who literally loves life. Okay. So try this. I'm a I'm a beautiful, courageous trader that will inspire others. Okay, I like that. Yep. Thank you. Say it. Say it. I'm a beautiful. I, I actually missed part of it. So well, I mean, I heard you, but yet to reiterate. Okay. So yeah, I I'm am a, a beautiful, courageous trader who will inspire others. Yeah, and you can tweak that. But how does that feel? I felt it in my heart, actually. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Did you notice how your vibrational and your tone changed? Yeah. No, it did. Absolutely. Okay. I can felt so, like a bit lighter. Yeah. yeah. So in the chat, who, who who got present to that change of tone in her? Who noticed how more feminine she became, but still a lot more stronger, a, a, a greater depth of strength, and a. a and unstoppability. And that's just in a few minutes, Nancy. There's mm -hmm. greatness in you. Thank you for that. Love it. Nancy, I love you. And thank you so much for the handmade cards you made both me and Svetlana. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm glad that you both received them. So yeah. it's wonderful. It was so, so precious. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, when we talked about earlier having an identity as a trader, Nancy hit it spot on. You can be a trader that accomplishes so many other things. I generally tell people initially when we first ask, I'm a day trader, just to get their interest peaked. <laughs> because if someone initially knows exactly who I am, I want them to know that I love the stock market. The stock market is something that's just so ingrained in, in me and, and what I am and who I who I am and how I came to, to be on this position in, in my life and where I'm at. But there's so much more to all of this. Trading is just always gonna be an aspect. That's why the name of the company is Real Life Trading. Make sure that you know that you are and are able to accomplish so much and then go find the things that you wanna accomplish and then just go do them and know that you're already there, that you already have enough money to do literally whatever you want. And if COVID in your country doesn't allow you to go physically actually do whatever you want, then go do something else. Be creative enough to sit down for 10 minutes, 
or 30 minutes or an hour and just think through what are some creative things that you can do to change your life or change your partner's life. Like Edward's going to be doing a cooking class with his wife. Whatever that is, right? If Nancy's going to go and try to paint the most majestic painting of all time that she's ever made, and she's going to try to sell it for $300,000. What do you guys think? Do you think Nancy is capable of doing something like that? Yeah, of course she is, right? There has been art that has sold for that amount of money before. And if she really put her mind to it and said, I want to do this, then she'll go do it if she wants to. Or it can be whatever else it is. But we all have that ability to create greatness. We all have the ability to create and to make and to shift and to create and to make and to shift over and over and over. And as we create, every single creation is a new brainwave and a new thought and a new vibration that can send us into unparalleled futures. So my friends, I would absolutely love it if you get a chance to be back for class four and class five. And it's so amazing to me to see so many great comments all over social media and Slack and Facebook and YouTube about this particular course. I'm very, very thankful that it's, help, that it's helpful. So I will be back, Anil will be back, and Svetlana will be back for class four, where we discuss time, and then class five. We're going to be doing exactly what we're doing right now all night long. So bring people, bring your friends, bring anyone and everyone, and thank you so much. Sammy says, change your currency to love. Absolutely. Rick says, I'm very interested in more info on the Dreams course. Absolutely, Rick. So let me do this. I will send you the link into the chat pane. If anybody else has more in their minds and more in their hearts and they want to join Svetlana's class, it does start in January, which is right around the corner. Again, I cannot give a more recommendation, a bigger recommendation than this particular program. It is absolutely phenomenal. She's very, very smart. She's incredibly gifted. She has worked with countless people from all over the world to just help them download their dreams and create greatness. And to not, uh, tomorrow I'll be sharing with you a Neil's program so that you can get more information from him as well, because it's all about learning together and growing together. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. I love you. And until next time, love life, live life and trade it. Bye. What an inspiring class. And what about those interventions, huh? Thank you for helping us with our mission to enrich lives.